Nevada's Congressional Caucus looking to send President Biden and Republicans a message on their policy priorities. They're doing it through the guests they've invited to attend with them for the State of the Union address in Washington tonight. Brett Forrest is here in the studio to outline the issues they are highlighting. Well, Jim, good evening. So you might think the State of the Union is all about President Biden, but as you just said, Nevada's congressional leaders are sending messages of their own on mental health, policing, education, and abortion. That's a more recent development, bringing guests. Michael Green, Associate Professor of History at UNLV, providing a brief history on the State of the Union. Presidents from actually Thomas Jefferson to Woodrow Wilson, uh, they just sent a message over. No guests, no muss, no fuss. But having guests gives you the opportunity to make a statement. Nevada's delegation making statements of their own. Representative Steve Horsford, chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, bringing the mother and stepfather of Tyree Nichols, the black man who died after being beaten by Memphis police officers, sending President Biden a message on police reform. That's probably the most historically significant selection, if you will. Congresswoman Susie Lee bringing a Clark County educator who last year shared her story on a medically necessary abortion after Roe v. Wade was overturned. I think when they look at someone like Misty to understand uh, that these are decisions that are incredibly difficult and incredibly personal and uh, they should remain that way. Lee expecting President Biden to touch on the abortion issue in his speech and Misty Sugaris hoping her presence sends a message. The message that I want to send to um, the leadership, uh, especially Speaker McCarthy, is that we're not going to lay down on this. Um, we just won't take no for an answer. Meanwhile, Senator Jackie Rosen showing her support for law enforcement, bringing Metro Officer Laura Villacana, who's done significant outreach with the East Las Vegas Latino community. It's an honor to be here to represent the Las Vegas community and to just say that um, by creating these events and thinking outside of the box is how we're truly just going to create positive change. Senator Rosen hoping this can showcase the need for change in both the use of force and improved community policing in the country. I also want them to talk about how we make investments in things like Officer Villacan is doing in community policing and those resources that build trust and build up neighborhoods. And Senator Cortez Masso focusing on mental health, bringing the head of Nevada's 988 Mental Health Hotline and Representative Dina Titus highlighting education with the Nevada State College President and then Representative Mark Amade, the only Republican in Nevada's federal delegation. He is not attending tonight. His office sending us this statement. Like most other Nevadans, Rep. Am Amade will watch the State of the Union on his TV. Governor Joe Lombardo is telling Nevada schools, show me the money. He signed an executive order that demands an audit of every school district in the state. Crisis in the classroom investigative reporter Tiffany Lane is looking into what that means for school funding. Governor Joe Lombardo called for more transparency in our schools during his State of the State address. Now he says this is one step his office is taking to provide that accountability. This is how the audit will work under his executive order. The superintendent of each school district and the executive director of the state public charter school authority have to submit external third party audits. What's included in there, anything from employee benefit program audits to workers compensation audits to federal agency audits. This will be sent to the governor's finance office with a deadline of March 1st. Here's what Clark County School District parent and member of the CCSD Audit Advisory Committee, Anna Marie Binder, thinks of the third party audits. We need to audit the districts because they're starving, right? And if they're starving, we need to find out that the money that they're spending, like we need to know. CCSD officials say finances are reviewed by external auditors and are reported annually and they are happy to provide the governor's finance office with any information they need. Lombardo's order comes almost five months after Democratic lawmakers submitted a bill draft request to call for a legislative audit of CCSD during this legislative session. A forensic and legislative audit is something that I've told the district that I would advocate for in this legislative session. We haven't had a legislative audit in 20 years. She believes these audits will help with transparency. Is that money like being spent to actually alleviate a problem or are they just throwing more money at the problem and not really trying to resolve it? Um, a thing with the legislative audits is they come with recommendations 
Um, and then, you know, we have local controls. As far as the governor's executive order, the finance office will find what areas are lacking and come up with what can be done to fix them. Hi everybody, I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.